Hello everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, we have a few more days till Christmas and the next time that we uh, hopefully talk again and share it will be past Christmas. So again, Merry Christmas Philippines, Sitio 3, United States, uh, Eric, Katie, Tristan, everybody. It's good to see you again. And I told you last week that we were uh, going to talk about Christmas this time. And I usually like to try to pick something unusual about the story. I've done it before, and I, I like doing it. And so I've done that again. Uh, the title is something that I, I wanted to catch people's attention. The Blessed Mary Cheated? Question mark. So we're in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Follow along in your Bible. It says this, And in the sixth month, the sixth month of Mary, the mother of Jesus, cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy. She was pregnant with John the Baptist. You can study that for yourself. Um, but anyway, that's what we're talking about. In the sixth month. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. I, I think that's a really big deal right there by itself. And to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin, notice, to a virgin. Someone who's never had sexual relations. Okay? To a virgin espoused or betrothed or as we say engaged. To a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. An angel, an angel just came into the room where she was and greeted her like this. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. In other words, what, what kind of way is this to greet someone? <laughs> She'd never heard a greeting like this. She didn't know if it was good or bad, but she was troubled by it. She's being greeted by this supernatural being, an angel from Almighty God, one of the archangels, Gabriel. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now that's a comforting word, isn't it? So the first thing in, in, in different places in Scripture, an angel would appear and the people would be afraid. And here, it uh, doesn't say that Mary was afraid, I don't think, but she was troubled by what he said. So she seemed like a really brave young lady, but what he said troubled her. And uh, notice again, the, the angel said, Fear not, Mary, you have found favor with God. Wow, that's, that's what I want from Almighty God, that he favors me. And really, he favors all of us in that he died for us on the cross, right? Whosoever will may have eternal life. So anyway, verse 31 says, And behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, or Savior, or Yah is salvation. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Wow, this Jewish girl, young woman, is being told some incredible words. It goes on, verse 33, the angel says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Notice it says Jacob. It doesn't say Abraham. See, Abraham's house includes Ishmael. But he was talking about through the promised child, right? 
Isaac was the promised child of Abraham and his son's name was Jacob. So this blessing the angel is talking about would not come through Ishmael. He wouldn't come through Esau. He came through Isaac and Jacob. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his uh, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Think about it. An eternal reign forever and ever. This child's incredible. Totally incredible. Then said Mary unto the angel. She, she was a brave young woman. She spoke to him and says, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's like, I've never had sexual relations with a man. How, how can I bring forth a child? How can that be? She didn't say, I don't believe you. She just said, how's this going to be? Verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. He's explaining it. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Notice these words. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary's a very unusual young woman. She's full of faith. She's a Jewish daughter. And the people, I think, were at least in a place or two, it talks about they were expected. There had been a promised Messiah, a special person who would come, Micah 5, 2, and other passages, um, prophecy of this, some great, great person coming through um, uh, Judah, the tribe of Judah, through David, if you will. And, uh, and I think, as I've heard before, I think probably a lot of Jewish girls were hoping maybe they could give birth to this person. But it seems that Mary was had prepared herself and was full of faith and was um, I think probably a humble girl. Uh, and but but again, full of faith. And notice the the angel said, "You have found favor." In verse thirty, for you have found favor with God. The Almighty had promised this, and of course it makes sense that he was looking for the right woman to be the mother, the earthly mother of his son, Jesus. And he chose Mary. What, what an incredible honor. <laughs> so uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this verse 35. It says, And the angel answered and said her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And, and this come upon means above or over. So the Holy Spirit was going to come over her. And then it goes on and says, And the power of the highest, uh, the highest being supreme God, Gabriel saying, the Holy Spirit's going to come above you and the Supreme God shall overshadow you. And this word overshadow is incredible. It's unusual. In fact, it's only used about two other different situations in the Bible. One was at the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, three different situations and five uh, references in the Bible use it either overshadow or overshadowed. And this word, it means to cast a shadow upon, that is, notice this, envelop in a haze of brilliancy. Think about that. The angel's telling her, the Supreme God is going to come above you and He's going to envelop you in a haze of brilliancy. 
And this also means to endow you with that which is beyond natural, the supernatural. This is going to be a supernatural event, Mary. And you're the chosen one. And we know that there were no sexual relations between Mary and Almighty God. The Bible says, Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, or God with us. So she was still a virgin after she became pregnant. That was what was the most unusual about it from a human standpoint, I think, is, you know, everyone would see her pregnant and they would think, well, you know, who's the dad? Well, no earthly dad, none. And this brings me to my second point. Uh, so if you will, turn into uh, your Bible, Matthew chapter 1. Not Luke, but Matthew chapter 1. And starting in verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Uh, I, I, I want to talk just a little more before I go there. So Mary, the angel explained to her that Almighty God was going to visit her and there was going to be a supernatural event take place and she would be, how did that say it again? Enveloped in a haze of brilliancy. <laughs> Almighty God himself, it, his glory is so astonishing especially when you talk about God the Father, that he can't even be looked upon by a human being. It's, it's so glorious and so incredible and so powerful. Um, but, but anyway, in this case, the Holy Spirit was going to envelop her in a haze of brilliancy. And, and the conception of Jesus was going to take place without sexual relations, supernaturally. It's never been done before, ever. No one knew anything about it, including Mary. Just kind of get a hold of that. So she's lying there, and the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, comes into her room and is above her, and she's enveloped in this really bright light, and kind of hazy bright, and whatever, however the Almighty accomplished that, it was done there. And um, if you read on down, uh, I'm not going to turn there, but uh, if you read on down in the text in uh, Luke chapter 1, Mary says, for, for he hath done great things to me. Almighty, when she became pregnant, that way it was a totally unusual thing. And I don't even, I'm at a loss for words to talk about it. I'm trying to put some words together to help you think about it, but this is the best I can do with this word, uh, this Greek word, episkiazo, and it means to envelop in a haze of brilliancy. So anyway, that's one of the unusual things I want to share with you today in Christmas. And then now let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Found with child. What, what does that mean? I mean, her, her belly's starting to develop, and she's not just getting fat, it's a pregnancy fat. One that is very recognizable. She was found with child. She's pregnant. Verse 19, it says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, or an upright man, and not willing to make her a public example. And what that means in, in the under the law, if a woman... Uh, or, and a man, for that matter, both, were caught in adultery, they would stone them to death. Make a public example. In other words, to demonstrate to the, the, everybody 
This is what happens to people that do this. And Joseph didn't want that to happen to Mary. I find that kind of fascinating because like the title says, uh, the blessed Mary cheated. Joseph was thinking thoughts like this. He was thinking about making a public example out of her. It's like, well, I don't want to do that. So that suggests to me he had deep love for her and, and he wasn't having feelings of getting even. But the law called for stoning Mary and whoever had made her pregnant. And it says here that Joseph wasn't willing to make a public example out of her. So I, I think probably he approached Mary. It's like, Mary, I mean, can you imagine? He's, he doesn't know what to say. Here's the woman he loves and he's engaged to be married to. And like, how could you do this? And don't you know, from the time that the angel showed up to Mary, she said, how, how can I become pregnant this way? I've never known a man. And some of her thoughts had to go to, well, well, okay, I'm, I'm willing to be used by Almighty God this way, but she's probably thinking in her mind, well, but what about Joseph? He's, we're engaged. What's Joseph going to think? And she had to probably be wrestling with this too, but she knew somehow it was of God and she agreed, but here's Joseph. He doesn't know what to do about it. And I think he approached Mary and Mary's trying to explain to him, Joseph, the Holy Spirit overshadowed me. I was, I was, uh, how did we say it? Enveloped in a haze of brilliancy. I, I don't know how to tell you what happened. Joseph's probably sitting and scratching his head and thinking, you know, that's a pretty wild story there. But I think that he knew who she was. I think she was a humble woman and, and a, a godly woman. So I think he's probably caught between, them all. I want to believe you, but that's unbelievable, you know. I mean, no one's ever said anything like that ever. I mean, how do you expect me to believe that, Mary? But Joseph, Joseph, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I, I swear before Almighty God, if it's okay to use that word, that I've done no harm toward you. You're my husband. I'm, I'm engaged to you. I've not cheated on you. I've not done anything. And this is what happened. And Joseph's like, I mean, you seem like you really mean this, but I, it's too unbelievable, Mary. I mean, so I'm going to explain this to mom and dad that you you became pregnant by this brilliant haze that came around you and everything. I mean, they're going to tell me I'm crazy and to, to get rid of you. I mean, you know they will. What do you expect everybody to say? I'm not the daddy, Mary. But Joseph, please believe me. And she maybe talked to him about some of the prophecies in the Old Testament. I don't know. But can you imagine? She's probably a little bit desperate. She knows that the Almighty's chosen her for an incredible job. And yet, what kind of a predicament is this? My own fiance doesn't believe me. And her fiance is like, well, you know, I want to believe you. I, you know, I love you, but this is just too much, Mary. I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't think that I can go through with this. I mean, I don't know how I could do it. But Joseph, please, please believe me. I'm trying to get you to be in the picture, uh, be there. And so part of my point is, it says here, he is not willing to make her a public example and he was minded to put her away secretly in verse 19 and then then in verse 20 it says but while he thought on these things he wrestled with it and he didn't know he, he thought about stoner no i don't want to stoner maybe i'll just divorce her secretly and move on maybe he shared it with his confidant friend somewhere like i mean this is totally unbelievable i don't know 
it doesn't really say, but he wrestled with it. His mind was on this, of course. That's all he could think about. You can be sure of that. He probably had a hard time going to work and getting through the day. All he think about is fiance is pregnant and he's not the daddy and he knows it. It says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. So here's Joseph, he's probably pleading to the father. It's like, Father, Mary says that you caused her to be pregnant. I don't see how that can possibly be. I need help here. Your word says, stone her to death. I don't really want to stone her. But your word says, stone her to death. What am I going to do? And the Almighty, and those are my thoughts. You, you think about it however you want to. The Almighty gave him a dream. Joseph was looking for a solution. I want to say he was looking for a way out. I don't, I'm not sure that's the right thing to say, but he wanted a solution. He was looking for an answer. Please help me. I, I don't know what to do. And he has a dream. The Almighty, I want you to know, the Almighty will allow you to be put in the middle of a horrible situation, or what seems in this case to be a horrible situation. It's not, but a hard situation. Very, very difficult. Seemingly with no answer. And he'll let you be go through something like that. And he'll let you wrestle with it. He'll let you struggle with it. Not because he does not love you. Not for that reason. He does love you. He's proven it by sending Christ to die on the cross. All that he's done, he's proven his love for us. But he will allow you to go into extremely difficult circumstances but he promised that he would go with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you are going through a very difficult time, you can take comfort in that. Joseph was placed into a situation that was impossible from a human standpoint. And yet somehow, and is a lot through this dream, he was able to rise to the occasion. The Almighty will give you an answer if you'll seek after him. He'll help you, one way or the other, to move forward. Be encouraged in that. He always will. He never wants you to get stuck to the point that you cannot get unstuck. <laughs> he loves you and me that much. And so the dream, Joseph has a dream. Verse 20 again, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not. <laughs> and I'm sure that Joseph was hanging on every word. Fear not. Whoa, okay, fear not. Maybe this maybe there's an answer here. Fear not. To take unto you Mary your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now that's a confirmation, right? That's what Mary's been trying to tell him. And it's totally shocking and unbelievable. But again, maybe she even shared some of the, the prophecies about the coming of Messiah. And it starts dawning on him, whoa, we've been chosen. Mary's been chosen. I've been chosen to be her uh, her husband to watch over. So he's starting to get a grip. It's like, wow, I, I don't know what to say about this. It's shocking. But here's my answer. And I, I'm sure he was thinking that because he, he moved forward with Mary. In the dream, in the dream, it says an angel spoke to him, appeared and spoke to him. And and he also said in verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and she, you shall call his name Jesus. Now, isn't that what we read in the other passage in uh, Luke chapter 1? I just wanted to check and make sure. Yeah. Okay. 
So Mary probably said, well, we're, Joseph, we're supposed to name him Jesus. Well, here's an angel in a dream telling Joseph the same thing. And I think probably he was quite relieved, although he was probably still scared. It's like, well, I don't know how we're going to explain this to everybody. But okay, Mary, you're, you're telling me the truth. I got that. I accept that, and, and I'll go with it. Because, I mean, it's impossible that, that I had a dream like this for no reason at all. I mean, it, it fits exactly what you're saying. So, okay. Okay, I'll go ahead and marry you. I know the baby's not mine. I know it's not. But Almighty God has revealed to me that he's the Son of God, and you were telling me the truth. So, uh... And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And the last four verses there says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, is God with us. By the way, that's in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. That's why I know that Joseph bought into it. He went ahead and accepted Mary as his wife. And it says, and he knew her not. He didn't have any sexual relations with her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Did you get that? Joseph agreed. We'll call it, it Joseph's going to be the earthly father, right? And he agrees. Okay, we're going to call his name Jesus. What a wonderful story. And, and like I said, I like to try to pick out uh, parts of the, the story and talk about them that are kind of unusual. And uh, so, so it, this is incredible. I mean, this story of the birth of Christ is just full of incredible events and things. He is the Messiah. He's the one who healed the sick and cast out devils and cleansed the lepers and raised the dead. He's the one that died and rose again. There's no other being that's ever done these things on earth and you can be sure that he is the son of god and he is the savior of the world merry christmas everyone i love you i hope you have a good christmas god bless you